Beginning with the first Sunday in January, we have started a series where we're going through the parables and the miracles of Jesus in the book of Luke and looking at how they apply to our lives today. And we come now to one where it asks us the question, how far would you go? A pastor phoned the home of a family that had just visited the church the Sunday before, and a small little voice answered the phone and whispered, Hello. The pastor goes, Who is this? The little boy on the other end goes, This is Jimmy. And the pastor goes, Well, can I talk to your mom? Well, she can't come to the phone right now. She's busy. He says, Well, can I talk to your dad? He goes, Well, he can't come to the phone either. He's busy. Well, he says, Are there any other adults in the house? And the little boy goes, Yeah, the policemen are here. <laughs> and the pastor kind of thinks for a minute. He says, Can I talk to one of them? And he goes, No, they're all busy. Well, who do you mean all? He says, Well, the firemen are here too. And he says, wait a minute, little boy, your mom and dad, the firemen, the police, they're all there and they're busy. What are they doing? He goes, they're looking for me. (laughs) Well, that little boy had a lot of people who were concerned about him and were (coughs) taking their time and their effort to try and find him. Well, in our text, we have a couple of individuals who are very concerned about another individual. And they go to great lengths to meet this person's need. In Luke chapter 5, verse 17, we read this little story, and it's one you've heard in Sunday school, and you all know it probably by heart. One day, Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village from Judea and Galilee and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus so he could heal. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof (coughs) and lowered his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. (coughs) I like this passage. I like this story simply because of the fact how far these individuals were willing to go to help someone in need. Now, were they close friends of the paralyzed man? We don't know. All it says, they carried him there, went up on the roof, dug a hole in the roof and lowered Jesus down through. Now, this was not easy to do because in that day and age, those house roofs were made out of dried, a mixture of mud and straw and had been dried in the sun. And so this was not an easy task to dig through this, but all these men knew is that below them was Jesus and they had to get this man who had this need, the need to be healed, and get him in front of Jesus. They were willing to go that extra mile. They were going, willing to go as far as they could. And so we ask ourselves the question, how do we become that type of person? How do we become one who will do whatever they can to help someone who is in need? Well, when we look at it, there's actually three words that we need in our life. Three things that need to be a part of our life. And if you don't have these three things, you're not really going to, to not only not notice the needs of people around you, but you're really not going to be motivated to do anything about those needs. And the the first word that we need is we need to be a people of concern. Concern means to take an interest in the welfare of others. Without concern, you're not going to see the needs of others. Without concern, You're not going to see others when they are going through trials or tribulations. Too often, the only kind of concern we have is for ourselves. How am I doing? But biblical concern also says, how is the other person doing? What is going on in their life? 
Now, there are a couple passages of Scripture that talk about this. One of them does not mention the word concern at all, but it carries the concept of it. And it's that very familiar one, the second greatest commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you're going to be concerned about that person. Because if we love ourselves, we're definitely concerned about ourselves. But if we follow Jesus' example, love others in the same way, we're going to have concern for everyone. And there's a second passage, and we read it at the beginning of our call to worship. And it's a passage in Philippians chapter 2, and it's very clear. It simply says this, Do not merely look out for your own interests, but look out for the interests of others. Now that doesn't mean, don't be nosy. <laughs> don't stick your nose into their business. Oh, what are they doing this week? What are they? No, when it talks about the word interest there, it's talking about how they're doing, their well-being. How is life treating them? Be concerned with that. Now we can become so concerned with our own lives that we forget to look at others. But the Apostle Paul calls us to be concerned for others. Concern helps us to see the things that are going on in other people's lives. The second word we need is we are to be a people of compassion. Now that word is defined in this way. I'll give you half the definition. A feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for any person who is stricken by misfortune. In other words, what that means is I see somebody is going through a tough time in their life. Maybe uh, they've just gotten the news they've got cancer. Maybe they've lost a loved one. We can name all kinds of things. Compassion helps me to look at that and say, I have pity upon them. I feel sorry for them. Why did that have to happen to them? And what that means for us, it means that we have a soft heart. Our heart is not hard. We do not turn away from people who are in need. But it affects us in a special way because here's the second half of that definition. Let me go back and read the first half. The feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another person who is stricken by misfortune, accompanied by the strong desire to alleviate the suffering. We just don't see what is going on in the other person's lives. We realize that is not good. We realize it is something difficult they're going through. And we have concern and compassion when we can say, I want to do something about it. I want to help. I want to do something for them. It can be anything. I'm not... Uh, picking on Dave here this morning, but I really admire what he's done over the last several weeks with Dennis and Denise Doctor. Whenever I've talked to him, the first words I hear a lot of times, well, we had this problem, but Dave came over. We had this happen to us, but Dave came over. We had this happen. Um, she said our, our water froze up, but Dave came over um, with some water for us. That's what we mean by having compassion. It's seeing a need. It's probably the last time I'm going to build you up for a while. <laughs> but what I'm going to say, if you want to, if you want to have compassion, and be like Dave. <laughs> but more importantly, be like Jesus. That's what compassion means. And the third word we need is, it's part of the compassion definition, is we need action. Because the compassion should move us to do something. I can say, I feel sorry for that person. I want to do something. And then if we walk away and don't do anything. No, we don't have concern or compassion if we don't have action. Compassion. And compassion, another thing about compassion we need to understand is you can't fake it. You can't fake having compassion. There's a story told of a Dutch governor of the country of Java who was complaining that people wanted the Dutch, as they were ruling, to leave. And he said to a friend of his who was from that country, he said, 
Why do they want us to leave so badly? We've built them hospitals. We've built them clinics. We've built them schools. We've built them roads. We've given them an honest government. We've given them railroads and industry. Why do they want us to go? And the young man simply looked at him and said, <coughs> I'm afraid it's because you never had the right look in your eye. When you spoke to them, perhaps it was a look of pity or disdain or revulsion. But it was not the look of compassion. People need to see the compassion and care that we have in our eyes, in our words, and in our actions. People can tell if we are doing something to make ourselves look good and not really helping them because we're concerned. Compassion needs to be seen, and it cannot be faked. And of course, action. We have to do something about what is going on. And in our story, we see a lot of action going there. They brought the, the man to Jesus, and they couldn't get in. Now, they could have said, well, we tried. <laughs> I guess we can't see him today and drop him on the side of the road where he probably was each day anyway. No, they, they went the extra mile. They devised a plan went up on the roof. Now, we don't see this in the story. But, but I really like to think that after they dug this hole and after everybody leaves, the homeowner come up and went, uh, what about that? <laughs> There's a hole in my roof. I really think they probably repaired it. <laughs> But they were those kind of people. It's kind of like the story of the, prod, or of the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan picked the guy up, took him to the nearest inn, paid for everything he needed, and he says, I'm going to stop back in a few days and see if there's any more bills, and I'll take care of them. That's going that extra mile in showing that compassion to others. There is... A fourth word, and this is kind of a word of warning, word of advice. We need concern, compassion, and action, but we also need wisdom. Now, wisdom, let, let's tie this in with the needs. Wisdom, basically, is seeing the real need. Sometimes we think we know what the need is, and we uh, begin to do that or to alleviate in the person's life, and that's not the real need. We begin to try to help the person in a certain area because we want that to be the need because it's easy. It's something easy for us to do. And maybe we're way out in left field. What I'm talking about here is looking before you leap. Is that the real need? There's a story told about a country preacher one Sunday who told his congregation that this morning he came down front and he said, if you want prayer for anything, for healing, for whatever it is, you come forward and I'll pray for you. And the choir started to sing. And Leroy, he got up and he said he needed to go up front. And so he got in line with a bunch of other people. And the person come up, pastor, lay hands on him, pray for him. Leroy, come up. And the pastor said, Leroy, what can I pray for you? He says, pray for my hearing. The pastor placed his hands on the side of his head over his ears, and he said, Oh, Lord, I ask that you would heal this young man. Father, I command that foul demon of deafness to come out of this man. Be healed. He said, Leroy, how's your hearing? And Leroy said, Well, I don't know. My hearing's not till next Thursday. <laughs> we need patience sometimes. We need to make sure we get the right kind of need that we're trying to help in that person's life. And that comes when we pray. You know, when we begin to say, Lord, lead me to an individual, lead me to an individual this week who needs your touch on their life. Use me in whatever way you can. And then we and when we come across that person, when we see the need, and then we ask uh, the Lord, we listen to the person. Sometimes a lot of needs are not met in other people's lives because we're not listening. And then we practice patience. Not jumping in right away, but seeking God's guidance and leading and understanding what that person really needs. The men in this story, taking the paralytic to Jesus, drop him in front of Jesus, 
And what does a paralytic receive? He didn't receive what they thought he needed. They thought he needed healing. And that was okay. But his real need was forgiveness. And Jesus, sensing this, said to him, Your sins are forgiven. And then he said, Get up and walk. Be healed. And the man got up and walked. And what happened? Everyone was amazed at what happened. This man uh, went away rejoicing, praising God. Everybody did the same thing. And when we go that extra mile, when we are really willing to help people who are in need, when we practice concern and compassion and action, we will be amazed at what happens in other people's lives. How far are you willing to go? Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you, and we ask that, <clears throat> there, that you would open our hearts and minds and our eyes. Help us to have that concern and compassion, because all around us are people who are in need, but we need to look. We need to have that concern. And so help us. Open our eyes to the needs of those around us. But when we see those needs, help us to act in wisdom, to pray, to listen, to be patient, so that we may find out what the real need is in that person's life. Life, not something that's easy for us to do, but will help them in the best way possible. Continually lead and guide us. May we be like these individuals who went up on the roof and weren't even going to let a roof stop them from getting this man to you. We pray this in your name. Amen.